Well, on the fourth Sunday of the month here at Rooftop, we get to do, like, the thing. You know, the most important thing that anyone could possibly do in the world, like, we get to do it this morning. We get to baptize people in, into the name of, of Jesus Christ. Um, now, uh, baptism, big deal, right? When Jesus sent his disciples out into the world, he told them to do this. He said, here's my instructions. Go out into the world, make disciples of all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit teaching them uh, to obey everything I've commanded you to do. So this, these are inst the instructions of Jesus. Baptism is important because of what it is. I mean, when somebody gets baptized, they take a stand. They stand up in, pu in public in front of their friends, in front of their family, in front of their enemies, in front of the world, and they declare, I'm, I'm in this with Jesus. And I'm going to need your, all, your all's help to do that. So this is a public statement. But the other reason baptism, baptism is important is because of what it looks like and, and what it signifies in our best understanding of baptism, it is a visual uh, demonstration and a reminder of what it means to be a Christian. To be a Christian means to be washed completely forgiven of all your sins, to be immersed in the love of God, and to take hold of the promise of eternal life, of resurrection life. When you come out of that water, uh, that's what that signifies. You're going to live forever with Jesus Christ. So we get to do that this morning twice. We get to do it once here at the earth, first service and once at the second. So if you want to stick around for the second service, you can do that too. What we're going to do, I'm going to introduce you to somebody who's recently made a decision to get baptized. They're going to share a little bit of their story, and we're going to pray for him, and then we're going to baptize him. So may I welcome to the stage Ben Erlinger. <laughs> welcome, Ben. Here's the microphone, and Hello, Rooftop. And yes, Maggie, I'm scared right now. <laughs> okay, uh, so I grew up in church, and I did what was expected of me. Uh, my mom was eventually hurt by the church, and it led to us having a falling out. Uh, once we quit going, it was kind of out of sight, out of mind for me, and I forgot all about pursuing religious beliefs. It became more of a, what can I do as a person? I joined the Navy after high school, uh, but I tore my ACL twice in less than a year and was eventually medically separated under honorable conditions in 2008. It is not what I wanted to happen. This was crushing to me, and I found myself asking in disbelief, where was God? Regrettably, in this sadness and wanting to move my life forward, I married someone I never should have. And again, I found myself asking God, where were you at on this? And to top all this off, at age 25, my mother passed away. And angrily, I yelled to God, where are you at? At this point, I was openly defying God. I was living in complete rebellion. But then something amazing happened. I met a woman named Megan and everything seemed to change. We were eventually married, and she was the religious center of our relationship and led us here to rooftop. Her and the kids plugged in right away and made this their home, but me, I, I was hesitant. Then in January of this year, everything crashed for me. Uh, I began making many, many terrible decisions based off of selfishness, and all of them desperately hurt my wife, Megan, and my two children. And eventually, in April, I hit rock bottom. I turned a rooftop, and it was there for me, and so was Jeremy. Jeremy had met with me several times the year before, but I was never ready to hear what he had to say. But he shared with me again the truth of God, and this time, I was able to hear him. I was able to understand and believe what he was telling me. We walked out to my car there in Penn Station, and I repented and surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. Immediately, God began to change my heart in many ways. In some ways, the old Ben will still get his way, and I will make horrible decisions and mistakes. However, God is faithful, and he is teaching me more every day how to become a better Christian. That is why I'm here today to share with you and to proclaim my allegiance to Christ, body and soul by being baptized. Deep down, I always worried about being a good person. Thank God I finally realized I wasn't, but that God loves me anyway through that. 
Any good in me I know is him and his grace in my life. And I pray that he will help me to be faithful and that I might serve and grow in him. Thank you. So let's pray for him. Father, I pray just that prayer that Ben asked, that uh, you would be faithful to him. We know that you will be. We know that you have been. We know that you've been sticking with him through all his rebellious days. Uh, you were faithful to him before he even existed. You came to earth as a man and died for our sins, demonstrated your power in raising your son from the dead and giving us the Holy Spirit. That was for Ben and for all of us. So the same faithfulness that you showed to Ben before he was even alive, I pray that you show it to him now that he's eternally alive. Thank you for his story. Thank you for the way you've stuck with him. Help us stick with him and uh, be his friends and family. I pray this thing in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Ben Erlinger, because of your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce you to somebody who has recently made a decision to get baptized. They've got a little bit of a story to share with you. And then we're going to pray for them and then uh, dunk them. So may I welcome to the stage Katie Williams and her friend Aaron Schrocki. Katie, here you go. Thank you, Matt. All right. My name is Katie Williams. I'm a 27-year-old divorced mother of three children. Historically, I'm the queen of self-sabotage and poor decision-making. I have a significant and severe history of depression and anxiety. For years, I've denied the need of a relationship with God. I fell for the self-help book mentalities that led me to believe that I was in control. Despite a Christian upbringing, I had to find God for myself. I had to find myself so desperately in need of God's grace and forgiveness that it has taken me years to hit my bottom. In the past five years, God has not been subtle with me. God has shown me in a variety of undeniable ways that he is present. I have felt his love so deeply at times it has brought me to tears. I discovered Rooftop about a year ago, and God inspired me to get involved immediately, which is not my nature. Getting involved with service projects and showing up on Sunday stopped being enough for me almost immediately. My heart was longing to become closer to God and to finally take some leaps of faith. I counseled with a couple members of Rooftop who have helped me and continue to guide me. I knew I had to make some changes in my life in order, to go, in order to grow closer to Christ. After being in a relationship for over five years with my now fiancé, we decided to begin those changes at home. We committed to praying and studying the Bible together regularly and to deny ourselves by living obediently and by God's design, learning to honor each other as he has called us to. My life is being transformed day by day, a transformation that is only possible through God. I accept Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins and our salvation as my Savior. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 4 says, Or don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into his death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. I hope and pray that in this life I can glorify God in everything that I do. Thank you to everyone here who continues to encourage me along this lifelong journey. Okay, let's pray for Katie. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for creating Katie in your image. I thank you for the woman you've made her to be. I thank you for the family you've blessed her with. Um, I just pray that you will use her commitment to you um, to bless her family, 
for a thousand generations of those who obey you, as you promised. I pray for her to continue to grow in her walk. I pray for this testimony that you've blessed her with, Lord, to be used um, to bring you glory and um, to help make more followers of Christ, who make followers of Christ, who make followers of Christ. In Jesus' name. Katie, do you accept Jesus Christ as your hope and your salvation? I do. I want to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you, too, can be baptized here at Rooftop Church in that wonderfully, beautifully warm-watered tub right there. Um, it's been great witnessing both of those baptisms. If you have questions, if you're interested, if this has sparked something inside of you, since God might be speaking to you about this, you can fill out on the blue card and say, hey, baptism questions, give us your contact info, drop it in the offering at the end of the service, and we'd love to follow up with you. So 